I'm going to begin with the Word of God. I'm going to follow Him because every day, God is building you up. God is making a change in your life. So make this day a new beginning in your life. As you worship the Lord, every day you listen to the Word of God. As you become closer and even becoming Christ-like in your daily life. What a wonderful day to worship the Lord. Welcome to Sunday service brought to you by the Pentecostal Missionary Church of Christ in the Fourth Watch, headed by the good man of the house, Apostle Arsenio Tan for y'all. As we set a new beginning this year, let us set aside all the unnecessary and negativities and let us start holding on to God. If we've been through hard times, if we have reached our rock bottom, this is the time that we must bounce back and start our new beginning. And this new beginning, this isn't just about the change. This is not just about half-hearted decisions, but this is about seeing the grace of God that when we were in our lowest, our poorest, our ugliest state, since then until now, we can see that God has always been with us, waiting for us to reach out to Him. And this new beginning, it is about acting on it. Is it about moving forward with the Lord? Glory to God. So now, be with us as we praise and glorify the name of God through singing of praise and worship.
to God, hallelujah. As children of God, we will forever be grateful because even if we fall from grace, God is always there to catch us. Let your Holy Spirit fall on us, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. to worship you my God I love to worship you my Lord and see your spirit fall in power your love unfolding gifts from heaven I love to worship you you my lord and feel your precious bread of heaven your all-consuming love holy spirit come in power change my heart i want to
A blessed day to everyone. We would like to greet all the viewers of our Sunday service episode 4. A, a pleasant morning and a happy new year. Wherever you are watching this program, we would like to greet you. A blessed day, a blessed Sunday. And we are hoping that you are having a good time today. And before we uh, study the words of God, first, let us bow our heads and pray. Father God, to you we entrust our meditation of your words. Continue to bless each one of us who are listening and watching this program. Continue to speak to us through your words and through your Holy Spirit. Continue to move in our hearts and continue to make your will manifest in our lives. And we thank you, Father God, this morning for the life that we have. We thank you for the strength that we have for the new year that you have given us. Continue to speak in our hearts so that may we live a life that is pleasing before you. Bless each one of us as we study your words. This we pray in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. This morning, the message I would like to deliver to you is entitled, The Right Way to Start the New Year. The Right Way to Start the New Year. And many people in our time, start their new year with their new year's resolution. Hindi natin may pagkakaila yan na maraming tao na gustong simula ng kanilang taon, taglay ang kanilang mga new year's resolution. Because we want to change our lives for the better. We want to improve our lives for the better. We want to improve the quality of life that we have. And we want to change the bad habits or any habits that we have, we want to change it and remove any, you know, uh, any addiction or any bad habits that we have to make our life better, to improve the quality of life that we have. We want to be productive. Marami niyan. Iba't iba ang New Year's resolution ng tao. Gusto nilang uh, mas maraming ma-achieve sa taong ito. Gusto nilang mas maging productive. Gusto nilang alisin yung mga pangit na nakagawian nila sa buhay. And there are different New Year's resolution. We want to change our lifestyle. Ang iba, we want to be healthy, you know, uh, and live a longer life. You know, we want to shed the weight that we gained last December. Yan, yun yung karaniwang mga New Year's resolution. But the Bible is telling us on how to start right. The Bible is teaching us how to start right. And that's what we are going to study. So number one, the right way to start the new year is by meditating in the works of God. Number one, meditating in the works of God. And let us read in the book of Psalms, chapter 77, verses 11 to 12. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your wonders of old. And verse 12, I will ponder all your work and meditate on your mighty deeds. This is the resolve. This is the resolution of King David. That he, he wanted to ponder on the works of God. To meditate on the works of God. You know, Unless we are able to meditate upon the goodness of God, we will not have the appropriate actions before Him. Hanggat hindi natin kinikilala yung, yung kabutihan, yung mga ginawa ng Diyos sa ating buhay, hindi natin magagawa ang nararapat na aksyon, yung nauukol na aksyon para sa Kanya. And you know, a, a year have passed and many things have happened. You know, we, we went to di through different struggles. We went through different circumstances in life. Dumaan tayo sa iba't ibang pagsubok. Nariyan ang sakit. Marami sa atin ang dinapuan ng karamdaman. Dumaan sa mga sakit. Marami sa atin ang dumaan sa Mabibigat na pagsubok. Nandyan ang mga matitinding pangangailangan. Iba't ibang pagsubok ang ating napagdaanan sa buong taon. And 
And I myself, I can testify that I, I, I too, uh, the previous year, uh, I've went through different struggles. Ako mismo, I myself, I, I, I had a COVID. <laughs> I was coughing blood. Dumudura ako ng dugo. And I am, I am having a hard time to breathe. Marami sa atin ang dumaan sa iba't ibang pagsubok. Nandiyan ang mga pangangailangan, kahirapan ng buhay, nariyan ang problema sa pamilya, problema sa trabaho. You know, we, we went through different storms in life. We have our emotional breakdowns. We have our mental breakdowns. We went through different things and different trials in life the previous year. And unless, unless we meditate upon the goodness of God, we will not have the appropriate actions before Him. Hanggat hindi natin kilalanin ang kabutihan ng Diyos na naging karanasan natin sa ating mga buhay, hindi natin magagawang ikilos ang nararapat na aksyon para sa Kanya. And if it is not for the goodness of God, we will not be here. You know? Uh, yung, meron kang, yung meron kang buhay, may lakas ka, yan ay isang bagay na may pagpapasalamat na natin sa Diyos. You have the life, you have the strength, your, your loved ones, they are healthy, they're doing good. Yun pa lamang, it's more than enough to thank the Lord. Those are reasons that you can thank God for. Bakit po? Mar- marami, tayo, <laughs> marami tayong mga kakilala hindi na inabot ang 2022. You know? Uh, m- many people that we know hindi na umabot ng bagong taon. You know, uh, uh, sila ay pumanaw na. Hindi na nila, they were not able to reach 2022. And that's the reality of life. Yan ang katotohanan ng buhay. And if it is not for the goodness of God, we will not be here. We will not have the life. We will not have the strength. You know, we will not have all the goodness and blessings that we have. You have the, the, the breath of life. Yan ay isang bagay na may pagpapasalamat na natin sa Diyos. And again, my beloved, my, to all my friends, unless we meditate upon the goodness of God, hanggat hindi natin kinikilala ang mga ginawa ng Diyos sa ating buhay, hindi natin magagawang magpasalamat. Hindi natin magagawang ikilos ang nararapat na aksyon. And what else do we need to meditate on? We need to meditate on our failures and repent. We need to meditate on our failures and repent. Yes, we are we are beings with limitations. Tayo ay mga nilalang na puno ng kahinaan. <laughs> we, we are kaya people are people, sabi nga nila. People are people. Tao lang, tao lang nagkakamali, nagkukulang. Yes, it's normal. Tao lang tayo. We're not perfect. Kahit sino naman nagkukulang, nagkakamali. But what we need is to meditate upon our weaknesses, to meditate on our failures and repent. We need to assess ourselves. We need to assess ourselves. You know, uh, feedback is vital for improvement. Be it, be it sa company or any organization or be it to yourself, sa sarili mo. Feedback is vital for improvement. Pag wala kang feedback, you will not improve. <laughs> diba? And, uh, you know, that's why yung mga companies or yung other organizations, they have their year-end assessment. Yan. Meron silang mga year-end assessment. They have their summit meetings. Meron silang quarterly assessment. And it also applies to us personally. In, on the personal level, we need to assess ourselves. How how do we or how did we conduct ourselves the previous year? Paano natin ikinilos ang ating mga sarili? Paano tayo namuhay nung nagdaang taon? 
feedback is vital for improvement. And we need to assess ourselves. Because unless, unless we change our actions, unless we assess ourselves, and unless we change our actions, we are bound to repeat our mistakes. Let me repeat that. Unless we assess ourselves and change our actions, we are bound to repeat our mistakes. We are bound to have the same outcome. Same outcome. If we have the same action, you will have the same reaction. And unless we change something, unless we do something about it, we will have the same results. And that is why we need to assess ourselves. And the Bible is likened to a mirror. Ang salita ng Diyos ay inhalintulad sa gaya ng salamin. You, you assess yourselves. You, you look at yourselves by looking at the words of God, by reflecting on the words of God, you assess yourselves. And that is why we look on the mirror. Kaya tayo nananalamin, di ba? Pag may dumi ka sa mukha, you, syempre, aalisin mo. May, may dumi ka sa mukha. Alam nga namang nakita mo na may dumi ka sa mukha, hahayaan mo lang. That's why we look on the mirror and remove the dirt on our face. And, and that is the, the metaphor used in the Bible. Na ang salita ng Diyos ay gaya ng salamin. Na, nag, na nagre-reflect sa atin that, that on how we should conduct ourselves. And number two, number two way to start the new year is by offering thanksgiving to God. By offering thanksgiving to God. And you know, I, I wrote it down, not everyone can show their gratitude to God. Not everyone can show their gratitude to God. Hindi lahat ng tao ay kaya magpasalamat sa Diyos. Or hindi lahat ng tao ay nagagawa magpasalamat sa Diyos. You know, they, they attribute all their achievements, they attribute all their successes on their own, on themselves. Sa sarili nila. It is because of me, I am like this. <laughs> Ganyan ang mentality ng, ng ibang tao. But the Bible is telling us that we should offer thanksgiving to God and acknowledge God. You know, only if we are able to acknowledge the goodness of God, only then, only then, we can be able to offer thanksgiving to Him. And let us read in the book of Psalms, chapter 103, verses 2 to 5. Psalms, chapter 103, verses 2 to 5. Let us read, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy. Verse 5, who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Yan ang sabi ng salita ng Diyos. This is what the Lord says. Remember the work of the Lord and all His benefits to you. Yan ang paalala ng salita ng Diyos. Na alalahanin natin ang kabutihan ng Diyos. That, that what we are, that what we have, it is not because of our own. It is because of God. It is because of God. It is not because... You are great on your own. You have your skills. You have your talents. It is not of your own. It is because of God. At ang sabi sa, sa, sa Corinthians, di ba? Na yung mga bagay na tinanggap natin ay hi, wag natin ipagmapuri sa ating mga sarili. Na gaya natin, na hindi natin tinanggap. Because in reality, all that we have, even our life, e even the air that we breathe, is from God. <laughs> That's the reality. <laughs> yung, yung, maging yung hininga natin na, na hinihinga, yung hangin. Diba? Lahat po yan ay galing sa Diyos. 
Lahat, wala pong wala pong company ang nagmamay-ari ng <laughs> ng hangin. <laughs> Kung may alam po kayong may company na nagmamay-ari ng hangin, please let us please let us know. <laughs> Even the air that we breathe is from God. At libre yan. Hindi tayo sinisingil. And just imagine kung may metrohan ka ng... Bigyan tayo ng metro ng Diyos. O, oh, yan. Nakaka-one hour ka ng hinga. O. Oh. Or nakaka-one year ka ng hinga. Magbayad ka ng metro mo. Wala pong ganun. And, and that simple thing, yung, yung ganyan kasimpleng bagay, it's a reason for us to offer thanksgiving to God. Yang yang maliit na bagay na yan, sapat na yan. It's more than, actually it's more than enough for us to thank God. Bakit po? Yung may hininga ka. <laughs> Malaking biyaya yan. Gaya nga po na sabi ko. Marami ang marami ang hindi na humihinga. They are six feet below the ground. But you have the life, you have the air that you breathe. It's a reason, more than enough reason for us to thank God. And In the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 15, the Bible is teaching us to acknowledge God. And let us read. Through Him, then let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God that is the fruit of lips that acknowledge His name. So it is clear in the verse that we have read that we should acknowledge the name of God. We should acknowledge God. We should acknowledge God. And through what? Through the fruits of our lips. Magpasalamat tayo sa Panginoon. Purihin natin ang Diyos. And let us thank God. Let us thank God. You know, there's nothing wrong in thanking God. Walang masamang magpasalamat sa Diyos. And, and you know, people are, I, I don't know, <laughs> some people are, are thinking, thinking of it as an awkward thing to, to praise the Lord in the public or to thank the Lord in the public. <laughs> And I can tell you that there's nothing wrong in thanking God. Walang masamang magpasalamat sa Diyos. And in the Bible, there, there, is, there is an example. Let us read uh, in the book of Job, chapter 1, verses 21. You know, Job is, an, is a good example. Job is a man. Blessed by God. He has everything. He, he has a wife, a children, all the properties. You know, Job is a man blessed by God, but awful circumstances came in his way. And Job is an, is an example that we should thank God, we should acknowledge God, not only in good times, but also during bad times. He is an example that we should thank God, we should acknowledge God, not only in good times, but also in bad times. And again, Job is a man who is, uh, we can say that he could, he could not ask for more. He has everything. He has wife, he has his children, all the properties. And But awful uh, circumstances came in his way and, you know, bad things came in his way. You know, disasters came in and he lost his properties and he lost his children. He even got sick. Nagkaroon siya ng mga bukol. And his wife even left him because of his faithfulness to God. But his resolve, take note of this, his resolve, let us read. Basahin natin ang kanyang paninindigan. Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Yan ang kanyang resolution. That is the resolution of Job. Yan ang kanyang paninindigan. And no matter what happens, not only in good times, but also in bad times, I will bless the name of the Lord. And nawa, magkaroon tayo ng ganyang... Damdamin, magkaroon tayo ng ganyang mindset, ng kaisipan, na not only in bad times, not only in bad times, or not only in good times, but also in bad times, we will thank the Lord. You know, it is only but right and proper to show our gratitude to someone who has done us good. Let me repeat that. It is only proper to show our gratitude 
to someone who has done us good. Diba? Uh, it's, it's not a good thing to be called ungrateful. There's the word ingrato or ungrateful. At ayaw natin matawag na ungrateful or ingrato. Pangit. It's like <laughs> parang wala kang utang na loob or wala kang uh, pagkilala sa kabutihan na ginawa sa iyo. And you know, as people, and as people who are recipients of God's goodness, it is only but proper to show our gratitude to someone who has done us good. And that is God. And now, number three, or the third way of showing, or the third way of having the, the right, the minor, the right way to start the new year is to entrust everything to God. Entrust everything to God. So let us read in the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verses 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He will make straight your paths. Yan ang salita ng Diyos. This is what the Lord says. This is what the Word of God says. Acknowledge God. And trust not on our own understanding. Acknowledge Him and He will make straight our path. Ipagkatiwala natin sa Diyos ang ating mga lakad, ang ating mga hakbang. Why? Because we do not know what will happen tomorrow. Why should we trust God? Bakit natin kailangan magtiwala sa Diyos? Because we as person... We do not know what will happen tomorrow. And that is what the Word of God says. Many are the plans of a man. But it is God who gives the approval. And why should we trust God? Bilang tao, limitado ang ating alam. Bilang tao, we do not know what will happen tomorrow. We, we may plan something for next month. We may plan for the following month or the next year. Or we're going to go to there and go over there. But we never know what will happen tomorrow. And just like what happened the previous years, pandemic hit. Who, who would have known na magkaka-pandemic? Ang dami-dami nating plano. Pupunta tayo sa ganito, pupunta tayo sa ganyan. And then the pandemic hit. And my friends, why should we trust God? Let us read in the book of Job, chapter 34, verses 21 to 22. For his eyes are on the ways of a man, and he sees all his steps. There is no gloom or deep darkness where evildoers may hide themselves. And I want you to see the part of the verse that God sees our every step. Nakikita ng Diyos ang ating bawat hakbang. And, you know, it is only but right and proper to entrust everything to Him who knows all things. Nararapat lang na ipagkatiwala natin ang lahat doon sa nakakaalam ng lahat. <laughs> You know, God knows everything. God sees everything. All the ways of man. Kita niya. And it is only right to entrust everything to God. Total, alam ng Diyos ang lahat. You know, uh, psychologists are saying that uncertainty brings fear. Uncertainty brings fear. And if you are uncertain of something, if you are uncertain of something, if you are uncertain of what will happen tomorrow, it is because you have no control over those things. And the lack of control gives us fear. The lack of control produces fear. And ang explanation ng mga psychologists that the lack of control, of course, it's uncertain what will happen tomorrow. You, you have no control of what will happen tomorrow. Of course, you're uncertain. You have no control over that. And that is why it gives you anxiety. It gives you fear. 
Yun ang explanation nila. And, you know, ganun pa man, ganun pa man, ano, ang, ang katotohanan na, na hindi tayo sigurado sa kung ano ang mangyayari sa araw ng bukas. Ngunit, Sigurado tayo sa salita ng Diyos. At ano ang sabi ng salita ng Diyos? We will not be afraid of what will happen tomorrow. We will not be afraid of what tomorrow will bring. Why? For we know that God is in control. That God is in control. Let us read in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verse 11. And He has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, He has put eternity into a man's heart, yet so that he cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. And I want you to see that He has made everything beautiful in its time. This just proves that God is in control. Hawak ng Diyos ang lahat ng bagay. And that is why, though we are uncertain of what will happen the next week, the next month, the next year, hindi natin alam kung ano mga posibilidad, mga possibilities na pwede mangyari. Ganun pa man. Ganun pa man. Alam natin ang salita ng Diyos. We know the words of God. And that is, God is in control. We know the truth. And that is, God is in control. Hawak ng Diyos ang lahat ng bagay. And another verse that I would like to share to you in the book of Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 anong sabe? So Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 for I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord plans for welfare and not for evil to give you a future and a hope. Napakagandang salita ng Diyos. This is a very beautiful very very comforting <laughs> verse that you know, you can ponder upon. Napakagandang bulayan ng ang mga pangako ng Diyos. For I know the plans I have for you. Alam ng Diyos ang kanyang ginagawa. God knows what He is doing. That is why we do not need to worry. We do not need to be afraid. We do not need to be anxious. Why? For God knows what He is doing. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare and not for evil to give you a future and a hope napakaganda po this is very comforting and that is why we will not be afraid we will not be afraid why because we know the truth we know the words of god and it gives us comfort it gives us peace now we must not measure god based on our capacity and limitations. Huwag natin sukatin ang Diyos batay sa ating kaisipan, batay sa ating kakayahan. In the book of Isaiah chapter 55 verse 9, ating basahin in the book of Isaiah chapter 55 verse 9, let us read For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Kung gano'ng kataas ang langit sa lupa, gano'n kataas at kalayo ang pag-iisip ng Diyos sa ating pag-iisip. You know, sometimes we measure God with our finite minds. Sometimes with our finite minds, we question the infinite mind of God. Kino-question natin ang Diyos, bakit ganito, bakit ganyan, bakit nagkaganon? We are we are looking for explanations. And it's only natural to look for explanations. But the Word of God is reminding us, ang mga salita, ang mga pangako ng Diyos ay nagtuturo sa atin that all we need to do is to trust in Him. All we need to do is to trust in Him and to believe in His words. Why? Because heaven and earth will pass away, but the words of God will remain. God knows the best for us. Alam ng Diyos ang pinakamabuti para sa atin. He knows what He is doing. And that is why we need not to worry. The Bible reminds us we should not place 
our trust in any other. In the book of Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 5, ano ang paalala ng salita ng Diyos? Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart turns away from the Lord. In, if we're going to read the verses 7 to 8, ating ituloy ang basa, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. And verse 8, He is like a tree planted by water that sends out its root by the stream and does not fear when heat comes, for it leaves remain green and is not anxious in the year of drought, for it does not cease to bear fruit. And this is the reminders of the Word of God. Na wag natin ilagay ang ating tiwala sa tao. But instead, we should place our trust, we should place our confidence in God. And what will be the result? We will be likened to a tree planted by water. We will not dry up, but we will bear our fruits in its season. You know, if we have the right beginning, it will lead us to the right ending. If we have the right beginning, it will lead us to the right ending. And if we traverse the wrong direction, it will lead us to the wrong destination. Likewise, if we travel the right direction, it will lead us to the right direction. And to all our friends who are watching this program, I encourage you through the words of God, start right by starting with God. And you will never end up in the wrong spot. Again, right beginning results to right ending. If we walk with God, He will walk with us. If He walks with us, we will never be in want of anything. Why? For we will have all that we need. Again, right beginning results to right ending. Start with God. Let us pray. Father God, this morning, we praise and we bless your name. For once again, you have spoken to us through your words. Thank you, O Lord, for your comforting promises that you have given us, that gives us hope that gives us peace in this troubled world. Yes, our world is getting darker and darker and the, the, the people are getting evil, more evil and getting wicked all the more. But we have your words that gives us comfort, that gives us peace. Oh Lord, we pray that may your words continue to grow in our hearts. Bless your words in our hearts that may you continue to speak in our lives. Continue to speak in us through your words and through your spirit. And continue to make your will known to us. And also we are praying to all our viewers who are watching this program. We are praying that continue to bless them too. Bless their families. Bless their lives, their personal lives. Bless their works their means of living and also bless their health but most especially bless their spiritual life continue to speak to them father god and we praise and we bless you once again for all of your goodness and for all of your faithfulness we thank you O lord this we pray in the mighty name of our lord jesus christ our soon coming king amen once again we would like to thank all our viewers who, who tune in to watch this Sunday service. And we are inviting you again to continue to watch and continue to listen to this, the words of God through this program, Sunday service. And I can guarantee you that you will receive the bountiful spiritual blessings that God has in store for you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for another empowering words we've heard through Pastor Kemwell Kilyao. We're glad to have you this Sunday and we'll be glad to have you again next time. 
Feel free to comment down below what struck you the most in this service. We're also committed in bringing the gospel every day. So why don't you stay updated and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Go share with your friends and relatives and hopefully we'll see you again next time. God bless!